Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting Vogue show. I'm Richard Vogue. It's the 17th of July, 2020. It's eight o'clock here in the UK, wherever I am. And wherever you are, it's probably the same sort of time or possibly different. That does happen in this strange world that we are in. Uh, from a back room of a terraced house in Jolly Old Worthing at the foot of the South Downs and the edge of the English Channel. This is the Vogue show with me, a bald bloke in glasses, sitting here feeling a bit of a loon. Actually, I've got a bit of a dodgy stomach at, at the moment and just prior to the show, you probably don't want to know this, but I've had to sort of run twice, twice and uh, get rid of some... Um, biological matter that uh, it doesn't really matter where it goes as far as I concern as long as it's gone it's gone anyway let's say hello to a few people who have uh, passed my way which is lovely to see you we have uh, Connor's Dark Corner hello to you at home with Mindy good afternoon evening whatever it is where you are Glastonbury Gabriel hey how are we doing he says Joseph and Suter Joseph and Josephine Josephine Souter. It's that time again. Yes, it's that man again. Uh, the lovely Julia. Hello, Julia. Well, um, we have Ed Loud, Ernie Samet, Turbo Stream. Hello to you three. Uh, Wilf Meyer, Ron Langley, Tracy Murphy, and the lovely Judith, who is there with a spanner ready to whack people on the head should they say something inappropriate. Laura Riddle, Alan Sandell, uh, Peter Lowry. Hello, Peter. Put that magazine down now. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Nigel Sadler, we have Days of Yore, Seely Chase, Andy Delgleish, Laura Riddle, I may have said, Elaine Whitlock, uh, Angie Fenner and many others. I am sure if I've missed your name, I must humbly apologise. I'm so humbly. Dan World, there we are, look at that, Dan World, which is uh, superb. And uh, Nigel Sadler, what are you streaming at? Uh, are you stream what? What ho, Vobsters, Andrew Norris. Hello, Andrew. Very nice of you to uh, pop by. Um, Infinite Koala Army has turned up. Just Richard. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. It's Friday now, and um, Fridays at the moment, it's just me. I'm so soggy because uh, Julia's husband is doing lates, so she can't get away because of the children. So she can get away on Wednesday. So what we've done is we've swapped the Wednesday for Friday. Hope that's all right. If it's not all right, uh, please write a letter to your MP or send a complaint on the back of a £50 note and send it to me at the Vogue Show in Worthing and I will take it very seriously indeed. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, Andrew Norris says, pleasure, Richard. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, Andrew sent me another piece of music which uh, I've downloaded and I've listened to. And it's, um, it's, uh, I need to put some graphics on it if I go to use it. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm still not really 100% sure how, what even this should be. It's very hard to... Uh, Peter Mansfield, I think. Is it Peter Mansfield who did Zodiac? The original track that I use on this. It's called Zodiac. Um, it may not be Peter Mansfield. It may be somebody else uh, now that I think of it. Uh, David, David, it's David Li Linup, isn't it? David Li Linup, Linup, David Li Linup, Linup something like that. Uh, Zodiac, you can check that out if you so wish. Um, it's a piece of uh, 1960s kitsch music. Andrew, same order as the other night, says Robert Croser. Same order as the other night. Oh, right, OK. Uh, and that's uh, Mr Croser who's arrived. And hello, speaking of writing to MPS... Uh, oh, sorry, MPs. I <laughs> thinking of MP3s then, you see. Uh, I wrote to mine about masks. Oh, do tell. Do tell what you wrote about yours. Or you can give me a call on 0793 We had this uh, conversation about masks last uh, on Wednesday, about whether it's going to... I have yet to be in a shop where I've had to wear a mask. We've got another week of freedom to go. But Boris Johnson says it's all right. We'll get back to normal by Christmas. By Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Oh me, oh my. I'm not sure. I can wait till Christmas. I've had enough of all of this now. I want normalisation as we go. Now he's confused. Yeah, I am very confused. Uh, <laughs> uh, agreed, uh, Robert. Hang on, what's he saying? Agreed. Uh, same, what, what same order are you on? Don't think much of the camera work, says Dave. What do you mean, the camera work? Uh, hang on, what am I trying to do? Take that off for a moment? Yeah, why not? Um, now, on today's show, nothing. Absolutely nothing planned. Um, 
It's one of those, been one of those days. I went out this morning, I did some videoing. Um, I'm meeting, by the way, very excited. I'm meeting Fran and Rich from Floating Our Boat. I don't know if you've uh, been watching them. They often turn up and uh, watch the Vogue show, which is very kind of them. I'm sure, they've got better things to do than watch my old nonsense. Um, but they do, and um, we're meeting them on Sunday. And I, yeah, today I went out for a little stroll to try and find a walk nearby where they're going to be, uh, not too far away, over the Downs. I wanted to show off our lovely South Downs. I, I don't know whether they've been to the South Downs before, but I wanted to show it off because it is rather nice. And um, the criteria is to find a walk, uh, ideally a circular walk, where there are no cows. Well, it turns out that uh, the walk I did, there were cows. Yes, uh, I found two circular routes, two circular routes, lovely. Both of them had cows in the fields. Oh, no good. That's just no good. Uh, so I've, um, I think what we're going to do is a linear walk on uh, a path that has no cows on it because it's a main path and the field. But it'll be all right. It'll be fine. I'm sure we'll have... It. The main thing is I'm sure we'll have a lot to natter about and uh, talk about YouTube videos and canal boating. And Julia's got uh, a history of canal boating in her family. So it, there's lots and lots. And the other thing is I've had a gentle nudge from the uh, holiday company that's arranged the canal boat holiday that we did last year and we're doing this year saying, Oi, can we have some money? You've paid your down payment, but could we have the rest of the payment, please? And that's the first I've heard of them from them, really, since I put the deposit down uh, because we didn't know how long this COVID situation was going to last. But it seems that in October there is going to be no COVID whatsoever on the waterways. Apparently, this uh, holiday company have made sure that nothing like that could possibly happen. In fact, they have uh, they've looked at the canal where we're going to go on the Oxford Canal and they've sent some of the university students in the punts um, up and down the canal in their punts with those very long sticks, you know, doing their um, impressions of gondolas, chucking in special anti, not antecedents, no, anti-Covid dust which they shave off uh, the beard of a blind man who lives on Dartmoor. Apparently he's been giving willingly this rather magic cure and uh, it's been saved up. Not many people know about this. The government doesn't really know about it. I don't think I'm actually supposed to tell anyone, but this poor old duffer who they found somewhere on Dartmoor has been shaving his beard with a cheese grater and this dust has been discovered by special scientists, special ones, ones that are just not normal. These are buffed up ones with a glint in their eye. They all use a bit of Colgate, actually, and they've, they've got the Simon Templar ring of confidence around them. And as a result of all of that, they've, he's managed to produce sack loads, sack loads of this anti-Covid dust, which these boys have been going... If you've been walking along the Oxford Canal in Oxford... Uh, you would probably have seen them. They're going south from there and sprinkling it in and it's going to be absolutely safe. It, apparently it lasts until the last day of October and then poof, everything's gone back into lockdown. But we will get our holiday, which is the essential part of it. And we will enjoy it. And of course, we will bring you a five minute video from the whole week. And I thought rather than do rather than do, you know, 10 15 minutes every day whilst we're chugging up and down there, we just thought for the whole week, for the 7 days that we're there, we just give you one 5 minute video which which will incorporate a little bit of last year's um, some shots of me on a rowing boat from 1987. I've got um, an old black and white bit of uh, Super 8 film, Standard 8 film, actually, from a, a time I was in a pedalo in Bournemouth. And uh, there's obviously going to be a bit of coracle stuff that I did uh, in the Bald Explorer a few years ago. And I believe there's a, a, a photo, a still photo, uh, taken in Benidorm on a lilo where the chambers have busted and there was a great big chamber of my sister and I uh, arm in arm like this as tiny little kids kicking our feet um, and all of that will be crammed into a beautiful specially edited with no effects music or sound video in one color um, of five minutes in duration that we will put out as part of our 
canal holiday. And I think that will be a fair representation, really. I mean, you, you know, why go to all that effort of uh, making it longer? <laughs> I may well be... So I may have, I may, I may, it is possible, ladies and gentlemen, that I have just made a little bit of that up. Um, it, of course, there'll be a video every day. Hopefully, it'll go out each night um, or go out for each day. It depends on our connection. I'm not, I mean, it's a long time, it's a long way away. How long have we got? We've got all of August, we've got September, and then this, so we've got, you know, about the same amount of time that we've had lockdown going on from COVID. Before, so we know what that's like. I mean, people can wait, can't they, for the canal boat excitement that we will be bringing because they're so used to sitting inside, twiddling their thumbs, thinking, hmm, am I on furlough? Yeah, maybe. So anyway, there we are. I'm watching on two speed as I missed the first few minutes, says um, Sean's allotment. Well, are you watching this show on two the first few minutes? Well, in that case, I can talk very much faster and have everything going through really quickly and talk about all sorts of things. The time when I went to Gibraltar on a little moped and I was flying down the hills and over the hills and whatever. Because and I imagine that that is a little bit too fast for you. Anyway, um, I hope I'm still Capricorn, says uh, Audrey Forbes Hamilton. Well, I'm sure you... I don't think you are, are you? I think you're Audrey Forbes Hamilton, not Capricorn. Otherwise, you'll be Audrey Forbes Capricorn. Uh, Robert Croesus says, Sean, Pyrex, I was a test tube baby. I'm sure you were. Fiona Cooper, uh, you go in a shop, you've got to wear a mask, but in a pub, you don't need one. Well, I've not been in a shop yet where you've needed to wear a mask. I don't think it starts till next Friday, does it? The thing is, I could go in a shop and say, look, this is my mask. This is my mask. It is the mask. I mean, if you don't, you know, it is a human mask. If I could put white face on, couldn't I? I could put like in the old days of mime and say that is my mask. Um, but I do dare somebody to go in with a Margaret Thatcher mask or a Ronald Reagan mask, which was quite popular for a long time in uh, the Natural History Museum. Um, what else have we got here? Sean's allotment, he's saying a lot of things here. The 13th sign of the Zodiac has been discovered by NASA, shifting the dates of most star signs. The new star sign officially introduced in horoscopes was something which is actually unpronounceable. So I can't pronounce that. John Berger. Hello, John Berger. The claim about NASA has been going on for years. They've denied it every time. The Babylons came up with the original Zodiac. And used to, no, the Zodiac that I was talking about was by David Lineup. Come on, keep up. I said that right at the beginning of the show. We passed that that era. That era of the opening monologue has now passed. We're now into the continuing of the opening monologue until something more sensible hits me. And very lo little has, other than a brick. Um, so that's that. Glastonbury Gabriel. I thought the new sign was Pyrex for the test tube. Uh, wait a minute. There we go. Look, that's what Robert um, Croesus. Everyone's just quoting each other now. I'm a delivery guy, says Dean, Dawn, Dean, Dean Cooper. And he says, I have not had a break throughout the crisis. My goodness. Do you not sleep? Do you not go to bed? Sure. I mean, you're having a break now. You're watching this. So uh, come on. I've not had a break either. I put out a video every day. Now, come on, let's not uh, let's not say, oh, why haven't... Do you know, my heart has been beating throughout the whole of this. I haven't had a chance to have a the heart stop. My lungs have been beating, and my fake eye has been looking at blank things for ages. It's pretty, pretty much all its in, entire invented life. Uh, TurboStream says, Why do ho holiday companies want the full payment months in advance? They're having a laugh. Well, I think I think they want you to commit, don't they? So because you could just easily pull out, um, and that would be no good to them. And then they've got to find somebody to lie. I can understand. I don't. I have no objection to that. I only paid something like a ten percent deposit up front, which secured it. Then COVID came in, and nobody knew. So uh, Jonathan Beluzic is out there. He says hello. I saw Richard and Julia on a narrow boat once. They didn't see me. I was hiding. Where were you hiding? Were you a stowaway? Were you stowed away underneath the boat in that little aqua cell that we had? It's like an anchorite. I suppose an anchorite is on a narrow boat. It's a bit of a different thing, isn't it? An anchorite. I mean, you get them in churches, but on a boat, of course, it's um, it's a little bulb that screws into the anchor, and when it's on the bottom of the bay, you can see it light up. That'd be an anchorite, wouldn't it? 
Uh, I'll get Tutankhamun mask. Oh, that would be great. Wouldn't that be great? Um, and you could be mummy then, couldn't you? Uh, Glastonbury is saying something, but I, I think he's only putting in one letter at a time. Thir J, 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 Thir J, J. What are you on about, Glastonbury, Gabriel? Uh, Riley, they want to make interest on your money. Oh, well, they, I'm sure they do do that. Mike Dixon says, I did three hours of digging and weeding on our local community garden this morning and it nearly killed me. Well, um, those weeds can be quite tough. Some of them, I mean, triffids, try get rid of those. They're a bit awkward. I don't really understand this. I mean, this is why I've sort of had this idea to do all this um, this uh, farming thing, you know. And um, Richard, I was talking to Richard Suggett the other day and I said, why do you have weeds? You all seem to be suffering from weeds. Why do you grow them? Why have weeds in your allotment? Um you don't see farmers having weeds, do they? They don't have weeds. Even the um, even the organic ones. He didn't have any weeds. He had some beautiful species-rich pasture. He had his spring barley. He didn't use fertilisers, herbicides or anything like that. He didn't have any weeds. I don't understand why you guys suffer from weeds. It's, it seems a bit of a weedy thing. When, if I do my little project, I don't want any weeds. I don't want any of these weeds coming up in between everything. Just not going to plant them. So, um, yeah. Uh, Dean Cooper says, I went on a canal boat at the Black Country Museum. Fantastic stuff. There we go. Uh, Sean says, farmers don't have weeds because they mostly use chemicals for their land, not the organic ones. So, because um, they're not allowed to do that. They have tests, rigid tests. They have rulers that stick up like that. Quite rigid rulers, I think. Uh, Wrong lady says, tell me where you can get interest on my money. The bank. They're very interested in your money, but they won't pay you anything for it. Uh, not these days. I wondered what that lump was in the rug. Nice work, Jonathan. Yes, that's right. Um, we did have a lump in the rug. In the rug? In the rug when we went on our canal boat. Kept tripping over the blooming thing. Ed Loud says organic farmers do get weeds big time. Weeds are everywhere. Not on the farm that I went to, uh, Ed Loud. Not on the farm I went to, and they don't use all. Oh, they don't use uh, weed killer. Uh, my brother ha ha got the Grand Union Canal at the bottom of his street. But, uh, yeah, talking of weeds, I've got a book coming called. Um, oh, hang on, I'll tell you what it's called. It's called the One Straw. The one. It's by a chi It's by a Japanese bloke. Um, I've got some fantastic books uh, recently. Oh, I can't. It's it's the One Straw something rather. I'm sure Sean's read it. It's the One Straw something it's this japanese bloke 1940s or 50s or 60s whenever it was and um he was growing his crops and people would come to him and he said why haven't you got any weeds and he says i don't have weeds just don't don't have them and uh, so he just blocked he blocked out where the weeds could come so he used straw he, he he had the the thing the plant whatever the plant was and uh, he would put straw down thick layer of straw and the weed would come through the uh, sorry the plant would come through the straw but the weeds didn't and people would flock to his farm apparently because they were aghast how is this possible and i thought yeah that makes a lot of sense because if you don't have it's like when you put um, a sheet of something down on the grass isn't it the grass all dies well, if you've got a tiny little hole that your plant grows through you won't get weeds will you i mean if you if you have a, i mean i don't get weeds in my front garden so there's a membrane that went down ages ago, never got weeds through it, never got weeds. Then when I put in my mint and my hollyhocks and all of that, the membrane's down there, cut a small hole where I put the plant in. The plant comes through the membrane and uh, that's it. No weeds. I don't, I don't understand why you get them. Uh, yes, there we go. Sean's allotment. Manchester's a fuca. The method is, is called No Dig. Uh, it's the one straw. It's the, that's the name of his book. One something about the one straw, um, and his idea is that you you don't you don't do anything. You scatter the things. You shove some um, straw on the top, and you don't have to do anything. I've got the book coming. I'll tell you all about it. Uh, I'm informed, you know, very informed. Um, there's another one, George Hamilton. I bet you haven't got the George Hamilton's The Farming Ladder. That just arrived. It's in the other room. I'll get it. I'll get it and show you. I'm also reading this at the moment. This is a fantastic book. Another interesting book. This is uh, So Shall We Reap, Colin Trudge. I've got another one by him. 
Um, very interesting author. So yeah, uh, you get some farmers who get nothing but weeds, uh, but they make lots of money somehow. Perhaps they sell the weeds. Maybe you're doing the wrong thing. Maybe if you sold the weeds, that would you know do the thing. If you can't grow the ordinary crops, then grow the weeds, clearly. It's got to be good, isn't it? That's got to be good for compost. Surely if you grow a lot of weeds, you grow as many weeds as you can, harvest the weeds, let them turn into compost and flog it. That's that's obviously a good answer. Mike Dixon says, the, this evening, Bella and I visited the secret garden in Hove. Everything is growing beautifully. It's an organic uh, garden. They have four beehives. It's a, it's a well-known fact that bees like weeds and they eat them. They, they just you put, put the bees on there. They'll eat up the weeds. Uh, Sean Allotman says the farmer's ladder came out in 1943. That's what is my copy is from 1943. Correct. You just look that up and Google. <laughs> you can't fool me. You can't fool me. Um, it, I was interested in the 1920s farming video. It's great. Thank you very much, Dean Cooper. That's 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 very kind of you. Uh, Tell Richard to stop wearing them, says Jonathan Beluzzi. I cannot appreciate those high heels. Oh, yes, I was wearing high heels on the uh, on the boat. Um, that's. I was just trying to give maximum pain, to be honest with you. So there we go. Anyway, I think what we'll do is we'll play our first uh, first video of the evening. Why not? Let's go into the video box and see what we've got. Well, that's funny. That's even stranger. Why is that not showing up? Hang on. Press the button till the cows come home and nothing blooming happens. Well, that's very odd. I wonder why that is happening like that. Well, never mind. I can do it a different... Can I do it a different... Oh, I must have deleted it. I must have deleted the video box thing. Well, that's a shame. I'll have to dig that out again from wherever, whatever source it came from. Hang on a minute. That's, that's really annoyed me. How could I possibly delete the video box thing? Uh, that was made by one of my viewers. Where's the video? Come on, get in there. Videos. Uh, here we go. Try this. That's better. It's back in now. It's back in. Whether it will work when I press the button, I don't know. I'll have to see if I can fiddle with that. Anyway, uh, let's go in. We're in the video box uh, department now. And in the video box department, ladies and gentlemen, we have some videos. First one from Gabriel in Glastonbury. Remember, he's going out on the uh, Polden uh, walk, the Polden trail. Fantastic. Look at this. We get a lot of dog action in this. So if you like a bit of dogging, this could be for you. Suitably refreshed from being carried, Bowie is now full of beans and ready to play. We are now heading up Ivy Thorn Hill. There was a hippie festival here on 7th of the 7th, 1977. The police had to kick them off the land in the end. Bowie manfully bringing up the rear. I love his little three-legged hop that he does. Though there is a bit of a glamour puss. Jamie used to BMX here when he were a nipper. Even now it looks like a technical circuit.
Bowie Cam. opened in 1931 and was the first youth hostel association hostel in the country and it's still in operation. I came across a couple of fallen trees. I love the texture and the form, they're just such fascinating shapes, I had to film them. On his way to Bristol or something. Well, and there's also an onion, uh, an onion soldier, an unknown soldier's grave up on Dundon Beacon, um, which is apparently where he came down. I think. There we are. That is the lovely um, Glastonbury Gabriel there showing off his amazing camera work and his wonderful dogs and his mate and, of course, the countryside in the Glastonbury area on the Polden Trail. Thank you so much. We've enjoyed watching that. Um, interesting about the uh, youth hostel there. So who has stayed at a youth hostel and um, or who has been, had an interesting camping or a uh, singular adventure on their own. Be interested to hear about that. If you've gone trailblazing alone, maybe you've done some of that. Um, what is that thing where you sleep in the woods on your own or you, you trespass onto a farmer's land and camp there for the night without telling anybody and then try and make out that you weren't there. Totally illegal. Can't remember what it's called now. Um, and you just, you know, you rock up and you don't care a, a thing. Uh, for anybody else's property. Uh, there's a name for it. I can't remember. Um, yeah, if you want to call from overseas, I think you have to put plus four four in front of the uh, 
the number and drop the zero. So when we put up this zero, hang on a minute, let's get out of that and come back to the show and I do that. So it's got 0793 at the beginning. You don't need that. I think it's just 44793474670. But you sometimes need a different number to get out, a line out, don't you, uh, of your country. So whatever it is, sometimes it's like 010 and then 44. Seven three nine four seven four six seventy nine seven nine whatever it is um, could be the number that you need. Uh, but if that doesn't work, I somebody else smarter than me will know. Uh, so yeah, from America, I don't know. What, I mean, Google must know the answer to that. But uh, I'm sure that um, Nigel Sadler would know the answer. But he's um, has he has he given the answer? He's disappeared. Remove the first number and replace with four four. That's exactly what I said. Plus four four. I don't know why you you don't you know you can't add the plus. I don't know why they put that plus. Why do they put the plus sign in there? Does anybody know plus four four or is it they just mean add four four to your number? But they put the little plus because on a phone, of course, you could look for the plus, couldn't you? And you could just do the plus, but that probably will screw it up. I don't know. That's what I do every time I come over to England. Says Andrew Norris. Uh, plus four four. If anyone's been wearing plus fours, do let me know. Uh, there, I love plus fours. I'd love to get a pair of plus fours, and my pith helmet would be perfect for the bald explorer. Normally, I have to put zero zero before the four four. Says Paul Smith. There's got to be. Oh, here we are. Somebody's found it. Sean's garden allotment and homestead says it's zero one one four four seven nine three seven, whatever the rest of it is. Um, try that. Uh, Selby had a barge at the YHA hostel, but it's gone now. Um, good old Selby. What was, was that Tony Selby? What was he in, Tony Selby? He was in a pro, was he in, it, it wasn't in Ain't, Ain't Half Hot Mum, was it? Was he in that? In that? He was in some, Tony Selby. Um, Jeff Kellison knows the number. There we are. It's uh, 011-477-93-4746-790-3201-492-667-8885-55 recurring. And that's the easiest and quickest and most simplest way of getting into the studio. Because I suppose it helps if I actually turn the phone on. No, the phone is on. It is on. We stayed, says Mike Dixon, at the youth hostel in Swanage. It's always a good name, isn't it? Swanage. I love that. Swanage. Um, it was dreadful. Oh, right. Very noisy all night. And for breakfast, we were offered cold boiled eggs. First and last YHA stay for us, says Mike Dixon. My daughter... My, my my lovely daughter, Georgie, she went to Scotland with her mate. Um, uh, what's her name? I uh, can't remember her name now. Uh, not Irene Handel. Um, a character from the... Uh, Eni. Eni Sharples? No, it wasn't. It was a character from Amy. Amy. Amy Turtle. Um, I always call her Amy Turtle. Her name isn't Amy Turtle, but I always call her Amy Turtle. But Amy. And uh, she went off with her mate, Amy, to Scotland. And they stayed in one of these these bunker things and it was mixed it was mixed men and women in the same room i thought that was a bit i was i mean i am a father so i was a bit but she said yeah it was mixed there were men and women all in this like you know like you see in the army with beds and i thought well at least if they were all women that would be okay but this was mixed i thought all sorts of things could be going on she said uh, that the foreigners the foreigners who were on the same trip with her were the worst because they would be taking phone calls in the middle of the night, three in the morning, in the same room. So you've got like this matron, you know, this like in a, uh, in a ward at a hospital with all the beds lined up, like in the army, you know what I mean? I can't think what you call them, like a barrack. And uh, like a dormitory with about 20 beds in it. And, and she said, these foreigners, I won't say from what nationality they come from, because I shall be closed down by YouTube, because it will be a... You know, that kind of comment beginning with an R, the R word that uh, sounds like you're running a um, a, a competition um, with an ist on the end of it. But don't say the actual word because the the flappy ears will come in and go. Oh, anyway, apparently uh, they were taking phone calls in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, couldn't sleep. And I just thought that's I said, did you know it was going to be mixed? She said, no, not till we. Not uh, till we got there, and we, you know, we were. It was a, a paid-for trekkers' holiday, and they were all in there. 
Um, Glastonbury says, I always stay in hostels when I travel anywhere. Always interesting people and parties. Perfect. I, cu I couldn't bear it personally. I like my pri privacy and I like peace. And I like quite because I like to, uh, you know, I, I do like to sit down with a book and I like absolute peace and quiet. I can't bear people telling me their facts and things about their lives and all this. It's like, oh my God, really? Am I interested? I don't know who you are. I don't really, you know, whatever. Uh, the number of youth hostels declined to the point that you can't walk or cycle between them, says Alan Sandell. And uh, Daisy Orr says, didn't Al Johnson sing about Swanage? I think he did. He went a million miles to get one of your smiles at Swanage. Um, Celie Chase says, trying this very minute, but no dial tone. Ah, must be your phone is broken. You need the dial tone first. You get the ring tone when you get through. But the dial tone, you, surely you know how a phone works. But it'd be lovely to talk to you. Paul says, says, the first time I stayed in a youth hostel, I woke up in the morning with a bloke looking in the mirror next to my bunk, adjusting his wig. That is the joy, I think. That is one of the joys, the unexpected joy of staying in a youth hostel. I did, I did become a member of the Youth Hostel Association, actually, when I was about 16 or something. Um, and their plan was to go off and do all this. My mum was very keen for me to do all this. I wasn't keen at all to do that. I was uh, very keen to st stay well away from all these unwashed people with long, lanky hair and bugs in them. It uh, didn't appeal to me at all. But, you know, everybody's got their own thing. Some people like it, some people don't. An international incident has occurred, uh, says Seely Che. I'm not surprised. Ringing up the old Vogue show is an international incident. Glastonbury says, I can read at home. I travel for adventure. Well, that's fair enough. I, I, I like to travel, but I like to take a good book and have a bit of peace and quiet. Because I get a lot of noise here, you see, with my son and his girlfriend banging around, playing games, shooting people up. I've got the neighbours on this side now and the neighbours on that side. I've got Morrisons at the back and I've got the trucks and things that go to the woodyard opposite me. I travel to get away from all of that. I want a bit of peace and quiet. I know <laughs> somewhere nice and... Nice where I can actually sit and relax after I've had a nice long day's filming and editing and putting up the stuff. But uh, we all do we all do things differently, and that's that's all right, isn't it? We can we can all agree to disagree. We're all friends here. This is a friendly place, by the way. Uh, am a ringing the wrong number? Well, it's the number that's on the screen. It's the it's the same number that's on the screen. Poor old Seely Chase. Somebody somebody come to his aid. Can someone just not nip round? Um, Nigel, just nip over to America, would you? Just nip round his house and, and show him how to do it. But lend him your phone. It's probably the easiest. Now, Sean Allotment says, where in America are you, Seely Chase? Is it it's in a place called Seely Chase? Uh, you've heard of Cranbourne Chase. Well, it's that's uh, just down the road from there. Um, taking pics, best channel on TV. Taking pics, never. I don't. I don't have a television, so I don't know what that is. Swanage is beautiful coastal town, but the youth hostel was untidily dreadful, noisy all night. We were delighted to leave. Yes, I'd be the same, to be honest with you. Uh, yes, I think so. Here we go. We have a phone call coming in. Let's find out who. Hang on, I've got to find my headphones. Where are they? Oh, they're over here. Bear with me, caller. Bear with me, call. I'm just finding my headphones. Hang on, hang on. Don't panic. Ha hello. Oh, wait a minute. Why can't I hear you? I've, hello. I can't hear you. Hello. Have you? Hello, you're hello. there. I am there. Just are a you second. There? Why can't you? Hear us? Hang on a minute. Are you there? Three. Testing. Testing. Ping. 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 Is that ping? ping? Yes. Yeah. Hello. P hang on. I can't patch you through. Why can't you? You should be going through. What's the matter with the bloody thing? I've not changed anything. This is. Sort yourself out, man. Sort yourself out. I know. Just so I call to see if your phone was working. Well, a phone's working, but um, I can't hear you through. Oh, I know. I can't hear you through the headphones. Hang on a minute. Plug it in. Plug it in, man. Yeah. Well, they are plugged in, but they are plugged into a thing. Shut up a second and let me speak. They're plugged in. <laughs> To a thing that's not got power in it. There we are. I can hear you now. Oh, there we go. Not only that, I can... Why can't I turn you up? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, because you're still on... Head. Hang on, hang on, wait. There we go. Try that. Down a bit, up a bit, up a bit, left a bit, right a bit, down a bit. Yeah. Right. There we go. Let's imagine I don't know who it is. Hello, caller. Who's that? 
Hello, Mr. Vobie. Oh. It's Nigel from Kent. Nigel from Kent. Well, hello, Nigel from Kent. And how are you today? We're, we're doing all right. I'm a bit knackered, but doing all right. Have you been into work today? Been at working, yeah. Been drilling holes in walls, hanging TV packets up. Uh, for big TVs that are turning up next week. Big TVs? Big TVs, 75 inch ones. My goodness. Is this to do with social distancing that now you have to sort of have one kid eight miles from the other and when you're trying to show something you need a whacking great telly on the screen? That's right, yeah. We, we issue them all the telescopes as well so they can see it safely from a social distance. Well, I, th- I think that is a, a absolutely admiral idea. In fact, admirals would uh, approve, wouldn't they, with the telescopes? Well, absolutely. Well, you, you saw my big screen that I put on the um, uh, Facebook page the other day. So. Yes, well, I did see that, but somebody who will remain nameless, Robert Croser, put a rather horrible remark about that, so we had to take it off. Well, there we go. I mean, it depends on your point of view, really, but there we go. Um, anyway... Big picture mm. of the three of you. It's quite cool. Um, but youth hostels. Yes. Bring you back to that subject. Please do. I stayed in the one that Glastonbury Gabriel showed in his video at Street twice, the little Swiss chalet. Uh, I can't remember the history of it, but it's rather curious. Um, and I used to go off on my own and youth hostel quite a lot, mainly during the 80s. So this is a long time ago. Is it because you didn't have any friends? I didn't have any friends, this is it, and I was on my bike, on my own. Now, I used to cycle all around the UK, and then I did a bit in Greece and in Canada, uh, mostly doing youth hostels, and I have to say that, yes, um, they are mixed, shared affairs, particularly in Greece, as you probably would expect. Were they shared in the UK, even in the 80s? No, they weren't shared in the UK back then. Um, There was definite um, segregation bits. Uh, You pay a lot and have your own room, which which few people could do, or you, um, and there were family rooms, Oops, the family, that bit, which would be shared, but generally you were in a dorm of between two and six or eight beds, really, um, sometimes more, Depen- depending on the building, really, if it's yeah. built. See, it's I, very I'm, I, I'm very stuffy. I'm very stuffy. I couldn't I couldn't cope with that. Other people, I don't want to, you know, somebody suddenly they're bending over and part of their bottom appears. I don't really want to arrest my my one good eye on the, the, the sort of builder's bum appearance and a bit of a spider crawling out looking at me or anything. Uh, how did you cope with that? Well, you, you have to learn to turn a blind eye to that sort of thing. Well, I've got you, one blind eye. I can't have two. Of course, you've got you. Fair enough. Um, but in that, that, that's got, in, in those circumstances, you do. But I chose hostels versus camping. Sometimes I camped just because I just like a few the creature comforts. It's nice to have a, a proper cooker and a proper toilet and a proper bed to sleep in. Did you have to share those? Other. Did you share the cooker and things with the other... People. Oh, yeah, there'd, there'd be a, a kitchen with you know, multiple cookers and multiple washing up yeah. facilities. And you go and, you know, you t- took it in turns or you just did it and you sat and ate in a you know, communal area, which, may, depending on the time you chose to eat, whether there'd be lots of people there or not. But I, d- I do jolly. get, I mean, I do get what mm-hmm. uh, Glastonbury Gabriel says, it's nice to meet different people. And I do, I do like, yes. actually, you know, I'm, I'm g- given over the impression, of course, that I'm some stick in the mud who doesn't like meeting anybody. But... Uh, I do make sure, of course, my the, all my uh, curtains are closed at night, especially at Halloween when it's trick and treat. I make sure I'm not here. I'm I'm, I'm a very friendly person, um, and of course I've got my electrocuting um, front door knob. So if anyone touches the door, especially if it's the police after me, there's two hundred and fifty thousand volts coming through. But I do like to meet people. Um, but I, it's, I don't know what it is about actually sleeping in the same room with strangers. I'm not good at that. I could, I would, I, it would, I wouldn't sleep for fear that they're going to come over and do something. I mean, quite why they would want to, I don't know. Maybe nick something, rifle through my belongings or something. I just, that it, would be that would be the least of your worries. The snoring would be far more of a general concern unless you... And the odour, the odour of other people, especially if they've been out walking. Is that not the... Is that not the... I mean, to me, that would be the most repellent thing. They do have showers. 
Yes, but people don't I'm always use. I mean, you, you, you. I'm sure you're a very clean person. I'm generally a clean person. I would have a shower. I'd insist on it unless it's, unless you're having to share the shower with somebody. Um, but it's the fact that you know some wobbly person who's probably done it for the first time comes in with shirt up to here, showing midriff and this awful odor wafting out as <laughs> if it's been. <laughs> jumping about with the cows. I can just see it. I, I mean, I've got a vivid imagination and I can imagine it and, and, you know, sitting there trying to disguise the peg on my nose, it would just be too much. It, it, it is not for everybody. And, of course, back in the 70s and 80s, it was dirt cheap. It certainly isn't dirt cheap now. I mean, it was you know, like a fiver a night or something. Yes. And, to be honest, you didn't really complain at those sorts of prices um, because you were getting this opportunity of staying it, it, I remember, I do remember, hang on, I'm just jumping in here, but I'll get you to finish your thing about how expensive it is now in a minute. But I remember when I joined, the thing that put me off, I'll tell you what put me off, because I came from a, a a family that had broken up, fam, you know, my mum didn't have any money, yeah. um, my dad had run off with another woman and various things, and we were, I was in a comprehensive 70s, 1970s comprehensive school, etc., etc. but... What put me off is when I watched or looked at the literature, it all seemed as if the people that went to these places were hippies. Hippies with hair that looked unwashed and had been bound up with elastic bands or whatever these people wear. And um, very earthy, vegetarian, very earnest, very, you know, dirt under the fingernails. Now, they're probably absolutely salts of the earth and would be the sort of people I would mingle with now. But when I was uh, 16, brought up by my mum, who was desperately trying to, in between her alcoholism and being abusive verbally to us, she was desperately trying to make us into, not make us, but brought us up in a nice, clean, wholesome way um, while she was swigging her vodka and brewing her cider in the in the in the sh in the garage and then drinking it before it had even fermented. I mean, it was ridiculous. Um, so I, yeah, I, w I just that put me off. It was these these sort of very skinny, <laughs> braided haired, short wearing thing. Now I wouldn't I wouldn't have a problem with that. You know, they're all out there in the woods doing their thing. Um, probably like swampy. Anyway, uh, I, that was an interjection. That's what put me off. But uh, it, was a long one. it was a very long one. That was just a by the way. <laughs> how much? How much is it to stay in a, one of these um, Masons lodges now? Uh, I think it's probably good knocking fifty quid. Um, you know what you'd ex ex a, a, could stay a in a travel lodge for that and have a flea yes. written mattress. P pretty much, pretty much, yeah. On your at least you're yeah. on your own. And, of course, you used to have to be a member of the YHA in the old days, in, in your day and my day. Um, they wouldn't wouldn't take any, anybody unless you were already a member because you had to hand in your membership card when you stayed that, when you were staying there. And oh, I see. You don't have to be a member now. Uh, I don't. I think it's a lot more flexible. I mean, they really are run rather like travelling travel travel lodges. Yeah. I mean, I know, you know, a travel lodge is for inclined more towards people who probably aren't going to turn up in a car, although you still can, um, because you know, some YHAs are not accessible by by car easily. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this. Tell me. As a cyclist, as a cyclist and as a and as a, a walker, you discover that nearly all YHAs are on the top of hills. Well, Looking for the white jay, look for the steepest hill, yeah. cycle up it, and you'll find it at the top. Well, I, I think if I'm right, that, that I, mean, I know Glastonbury Gabriel said that it started in whenever it was 1940, or whatever. But actually, I think if you if if you uh, notice that the the articles of association were dro drawn dro drawn drawn up in yeah. the uh, late Neolithic period, when the tops of hills was the place to stay. Probably yes, all based on Iron Age filth, I think. Exactly. But but but, but the, the properties that they use are, are varied from something dull and sixties built through to castles and historic, you know, abandoned Jacobean mansions and all just all sorts. Um, you know that the the uh, the Swiss chalet that you saw in street on, on Cat Glastonbury's video. Um, that, that is people go around and 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 sort of bag what. Um, uh, hostels, because you now you get get the chance to stay in some wacky building. 
Um, yes. Well, I think, isn't it, is, uh, uh, who, who is it, Landmark Trust, that, that you can stay in some very nice yes. buildings with Landmark Trust, some famous, you know, famous writers who've lived in a certain place and you can stay if you can afford the £250 a night or whatever it is. Yes, it's all gone up rather more uh, up market now, and, and there are far fewer youth hostels because people just don't do that sort of thing. Yeah. And of course, in, in my day, you know, mobile phones weren't a problem, so the phoning in the night, you just didn't, you know, th th there, was a, there was a pay phone with your 10p and the beep, 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 strong. Do you know, um, I, mentioned, I mentioned to somebody, I won't mention her name, no, uh, don't. but uh, I was happened to be with the lovely Julia, and I said, do you remember the... Uh, uh, when you used to put 10p into a pay, you know, into a call box and you'd get the beep, 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 beep. And yeah, you know, Wednesday's show, yes. Uh, oh, was that on the show? Yeah. There yes, you go. There, I can't remember where I, I meet. I mean, this is the only time I meet people is on the show. Um, mm. Glastonbury Gabriel, I noticed just now, said that uh, YHA membership gives you 5% off. A five measly percent. Five pence in the pound. God. I wonder what you get for it, you know. And I do remember when I got my, I did get the YHA, YHA handbook, which was this tome of a book, and I got this sort of triangular little badge you could stick on. You know, it was all the, all the stuff that made you think, oh, I'm I'm in now. I'm a bit of a rucksack. I'm a bit of a nerdy now. I'm going to be one of these Walker types. Oh, I'm going to be. And then I again, it's one of those things with me. I thought, oh yes, I, you've got to wear the uniform, haven't you? You've got to wear the... Yes. Why has everybody got to wear the uniform of these these sports that they do? Drives me up the wall. Cyclist. We mentioned this cyclist with their neoprene or whatever, their lycra. And, well, and... I, 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 hang on. I've got something to say about that. Yeah, say it. Get it off you your know, chest. I do cycle. I am, I am not a competition cyclist. I'm not a long-distance cyclist. I don't do that sort of cycling. But I'll tell you this. Tell the me. folks that you generally see on a Sunday when you see a whole peloton of 10 or 15 of them going Oh, I like by, that. Hang on. What's two. that word? Peloton? Peloton. What that, that's that? what a group, of, a group of cyclists, cycling in formation, is called. A peloton. A peloton. Right. Like pelican. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted. The, 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 the reason why, if they're, they're off to do a 30, 50, 80, or 100 mile, or 100K normally, so that's yeah, 30, so... 80 miles yeah, uh, cycle ride. Right. And it makes a difference wearing the right gear. Tell me this then. If they're off, to, you know, are they doing it to keep fit? So, well, generally, they're doing it for, for fun. Mm. For, for, a, for a social life, you know, you, you go for a walk through the video. Why do they all have the, beards? The, the... Why do they all have beards? <laughs> They've all got this sort of slightly so grey beard. Weird, beard. Really? They they all look the same. They've got this. They wear all this neoprene stuff or lycra, and then they have this grey pointy beard. Well, all the beard trimmers are closed, so you can't get your beard trimmed. Is that what it is? They just have it. Them. You look at them. You next time you see a cyclist, and they're hunched over their bike. Can't be good for their back. They're hunched so they all look over like their bike. Pum. They all look like Graham Dangerfield. Now you must remember Graham Dangerfield. No, I don't. I don't remember okay, Graham. Okay, you're just a little too young for that. Yes, thank fact. God for that. I was born go, in the but... '90s. I'm a '90s child, mate. <laughs> and the other final thing. Final thing, about, ladies and gentlemen. The, the final entire, thing. Yeah, the go on. entire show of just me and you. Yeah, no, it's great. Else. It's fine. Um, is, is 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 um free or wild camping. Oh, that was the word I was trying to. Wild camping, where you trespass on somebody else's grounds. And then I, you spend the night. That's it. And I, I, I don't. You see, I'm in two minds with this. On the one hand, I, I have a, a I'm learning. A, I'm reading a book by Marion Shord, which is "This Land Is Our Land" and why landowners own it and pretend they don't own it and all of that. And maybe we should have more access to it. And I kind of agree with that. But at the same time, if it were they were camping on my front garden, uh, they would certainly do something to my poppies as the blooming <laughs> fox has done but i would be a bit uh, i would be a bit annoyed not to be asked not just uh, somebody said look do you mind if i park uh, have i put my tent up there i think it's just polite to ask but just someone to go well there's no one looking i'm just gonna because where does that go next before you know it you'll be sticking a caravan on there or a hundred caravans on there with a bunch of mates with big amazing caravans and very expensive cars and pretend that you never actually earn a living i've never actually done it but i know a few people who do in fact one of my model rally um is enthusiast who's in his 80s mm. still in his 80s still i heard you the first regular... time i'm not deaf 
Still. <laughs> How old is he? In his eighties. Yeah. Yes, all right. Still, still regular. Yeah, so he's still alive. You mean? Yes. And and he goes uh, and and he does um, wild free camping. camping. Or wild camping. Yeah. Trespassing. You mean? He goes trespassing. Yes. Uh, he was going to take me. We were going to go off together this year, but that, you know, events have stopped us. Yes. Um. So uh, I've I've never tried it. Um. Andrew Norris says it's to be on and off the land without leaving a trace. Yes, that's the exactly. same as burglars, isn't it? Burglars do that. They they manage to get in, not all burglars, obviously, but the Pink Panther-type burglars, they come in on the on their special wires down through the ceiling and, you know, they've got the suction pads and climb oh, in and out. but they're taking something. They're taking something. Well, they're and taking, you, they're the taking something if you're on the ground, aren't you? You're taking the space up. <laughs> Blades of grass have no longer been able to breathe. You're taking the liberty. That's what you're taking, aren't you? You're having yes. advantage that you've no right to have. In the world that we're in, in a democratic society that we're in, the laws are you should not trespass and they are trespassing. I, I, I would agree. It's a very grey area and and to, to some. Uh, I've, so I've never tried it. I know people who have and... Um... Yeah, free to roam wherever you please in Scotland is a, is a true. That is true, and and yes. I, wild camping in Scotland would be fine because you're free to do it. Yeah, but I I just think it's I mean you know you put it as if somebody you woke up in the night and you went oh dear I can't sleep I just go outside and have a fag because I know you're an eighty a day man and there you are outside with your wicked weed like this that you've grown yourself. Oh, these cabbages this year are pretty good. And uh, and there's there's this strange-looking tent and somebody in it snoring away. Yes. And uh, you'd be a bit upset, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, uh, I know. I think it's, it's that... a strange thing to do, but people do it and have, have done it for a long time. You should take footprints. What's this? Glastonbury says you should take photographs and leave footprints. What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. It harms no one, says Mike Stevens. Well, I know a lot of things don't harm anybody, but I mean, going in and um, if you, you knock on somebody's door and run away when they don't, you know, when little old lady comes, she's not harmed, but you wouldn't think that that would be a proper thing to do. It's, it, yeah, I mean, we, this is a circular argument, really. Yes. We're not going to resolve this one. Not but tonight, the land anyway. in Scotland is yeah, the land in Scotland is owned by somebody. But that, I mean, okay, free to roam. I get that, and that is fine. You know, um, if that's the if that's the law. I mean, you know, I don't want to wear these sodding masks. I just think it's an absolute liberty to force me to wear a mask. But I will do it because it is the law. Because if you don't comply to the law, what have you got? Anarchy. Anarchy. Um, we better yes. we better move on, hadn't we? Really, because um, people American will be getting up to... fed, getting fed up with having the engaged tone. Yes, so. that's true. Beep 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 beep. Uh, anyway, lovely to talk to you. I can't remember who you are now, but it's no, been marvellous, Nigel. Ping. Um, <laughs> Ping. I love you and leave you, and, and I can't look forward to seeing what all the nonsense has been written on the comments. Oh, <laughs> there's going to be a whole load of nonsense. It's all good fun. Oh, you've got to stir them up sometimes. Anyway, uh, look after well, yourself. Have a good buddy. weekend. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. There we are. The lovely... Uh, that was uh, lovely Nigel from uh, Nottingham. No, not Nottingham. Uh, from Kent. Somewhere in Kent. I, I can't remember where Tonbridge is now, but it's in Kent anyway. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That very thoughtful, provocative call. Uh, hopefully we've wound everybody up. Um, so if you enjoy the show, give us a uh, thumbs up, please. We're going to go and watch another video while Steely Chase um, manages to bring up the nerves to have a word with the old Vobi one-eyed Kenobi. Let's go in the musical box and see if there's anything in there. And uh, I managed to get that working, didn't I? Uh, we have um, we oh, it's a it's a it, which one should we go to? Let's uh, let's try a bit of calm stuff now. Calm stuff, calm everyone down. A bit of Mike Dixon will calm you down. We've got a moment of Murphy coming up. I'm going to keep that to Alaska's go. Um, um, Murphy, Andy Murphy, there is um, he's got a corker for us. But before the corkers, let's go to Mike Dixon in a graveyard. Hello, Vobsters. Uh, Mike, Dixon and Bella and this morning we've been out and about around the Portslade Cemetery and uh, just 
just thought I'd share with you this lovely tree. I'm sure Richard and Julio will tell you what tree it is. It's just standing here and it's a lovely cemetery and reading all the uh, gravestones and looking at the flowers and displays I just think there's a lot of love for the people that have died many in their very senior years 80s 90s but sadly some that died very very young the large, large, youngest I've seen is uh, for somebody who was 10 weeks old when they died. This tree here near the entrance is very beautiful and there's the rustle of the uh, leaves in the wind. It's very very beautiful bark. On one, one tree, an old tree stump, there's some absolutely amazing lichen which is very much like uh, dried kind of mushrooms. Just makes you think that in uh, years gone by people would have used that for uh, treatment of various diseases. So I'm sure Kim over in Lewis would know more about that. But I thought I'd just share with you particularly the bark of this very beautiful tree. Hopefully you can see it on the uh, film, but close up, it's very, very special. Lovely to feel. I'm sure Julia would love it. And yesterday I was over in Seaford with a friend and there was an antique shop open. And I bought a piece of fossilised stick that apparently is 120 million years old exactly in the shape of a stick. It's amazing that I only I bought it for four pounds. Anyway, I just thought I'd just share that with you. Anyway, I'll pass you back to Richard. Take care. Bye. There we are. How lovely is that? Beautiful tree. I was I did look at that and I was just trying to work out the tree. The bark is uh, particularly lovely. I did think for a while it was hornbeam but um, I couldn't get to see the leaves very clearly. Uh, that's what I wanted to see. It's not a silver birch. You know, we worked that out. It's not a beech. It's not an oak. Uh, it's not a sweet chestnut. Uh, it's not a... Uh, oh, what's the other one? Bir Did you say birch? Yeah, it's not a birch. Um, it's not a silver birch. It's not... I um, don't think it was an elder. I don't think it was an alder. Um, wasn't any of those. It's a matter of deduction. Who knows? Uh, if you do know, send us an email. Um, that could be the surface of the moon. Interesting, I think that um, Sean's allotment there has got a copy of Wikipedia close at hand because there's lots of copy and pasting going on there, Sean, uh, which is uh, fascinating stuff. But yeah, so it seems that according to uh, the comments there, Black Poplar, is it? Oh, Black Poplar, Black Poplar, say that. Um, Black Poplar, it's very popular at the moment. Uh, at the moment, uh, interesting stuff. Um, yeah, looking at the wild camping, apparently it's illegal. Apparently it's illegal, according to... Uh, unless you ask the uh, landlord. Well, I guess if you ask the landlord, you can do anything, presumably, that is uh, uh, legally able to be done in this country, if you've got permission of the landlord. Nice tree, though, Mike. Thank you for that, Mike. Uh, appreciate that. Didn't see any graves. Didn't see any graves whatsoever. So it could have been in your back garden, really. Um, I did like the comment. Was it days of yours? Said, is it Michael Bella, who is the ventriloquist? That did uh, make me laugh. That uh, did uh, ventriloquist. No, that's not how you say it, is it? Ventriloquist. There we go. I knew it's interesting. Anyway, uh, do uh, tr uh, let's see if we're Seely. What's her name? Seely Chase uh, can uh, can give us a call now. Oh seven nine three four seven four six seven nine zero is the number. See if you can upset the vobes. On, uh, on set me off, set me off. It set me off Friday. Maybe that's what we should have set me off Friday. Uh, maybe I should do this show as a, a miserable old git, really. Uh, it's, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun sort of looking at the... <laughs> well, I'm having fun. You guys might be thinking, do you know what, that Vobes... <laughs> 
<laughs> Why do we watch him? He hates all these things. It's all it's all part of the persona, isn't it? It's all part of it's all part of the persona, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Seely Chase, uh, nice video. Yes, is it a lava tree? Does look like lava coming down there. And in fact, the yew tree looks like lava, doesn't it? It's lava, nice, if you ask me. It's still ringing. It's not ringing my end. Uh, nothing, it's still ringing. You've run the wrong number, so you think some poor little old lady's going to go, Hello, dear. Yes. Can I help you? Have I had an accident? No, I've had an accident. I've had an accident. Who was, who was the comic that did that advert that, um, oh, what's his name, you know? He always spoke like that, had a little high-pitched for, I've had, a, I've had an accident. I've had an accident. Yes, I have had an accident, and I talk like this. I uh, can't remember his name. Uh, I think dialing from the USA is 44793474679. says Mike Stevens. Uh, there's a pizza takeaway in Worthing not answering its phone. That's Seely ringing. Ah, that's what it is. Uh, Joe Pasquale. Yes, that's right. I've had an accident. I used to love those commercials. I don't get the telly now, so I don't see commercials, luckily. And I, <laughs> I use an ad block, so I don't see them on the internet. Oh, there's no fooling me, you know. Uh, Charlie Drake. Oh, a bit like Charlie Drake. My boomerang won't come back. My boomerang won't come back. <laughs> they were the days, weren't they? I've had an accident. That was... Uh... That was Joe Pisquale. My boomerang won't come back. And that's Charlie Drake. S subtle difference. Uh, not very much. Peter Sellers. Um, well, Peter Sellers did. It was a man of different voices. Um, diddy, pom, diddy, pom, diddy. I better not sing that one because you get YouTube. Um, couldn't do that anymore. The Millionaire S. Imagine watching that. I bet that's been banned, hasn't it? The Millionaire S with Peter Sellers. Oh, dear, dear. I bet that has. Been... And what about the other one? The Party. That was a great film. Was it called The Party? Where he is, uh, he's invited. He couldn't. I bet they. I bet that's not on YouTube. I bet. Hang on. I wonder if the party. I wonder if the party, or even the millionaire. I'm going to look at the party. You've ever seen the party with the bit in the loo, the bit in the loo where he does the loo roll. That is the funniest scene in in all of history. Hang on a minute. The party. Let's have a look. The party. Peter Sellers. Lou Roll. Wasn't Lou Roll a singer? Lou Roll. <laughs> yes. Oh my, if it's there, I'm surprised. Oh yes, it is. Hang on a minute. Let's see if I can get this over to... Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you've not seen this, this is, this is hilarious. Uh, I can't do it full screen at the moment, so you just have to see this tiny little... How can I make this? Wait, see if I can do that. Just just watch a bit of this. Go on. This, this will upset them. Hang on, I'm trying to get the mouse to... And so this is really small, isn't it? How long is this scene? He hasn't got to the bit yet. Get to the bit.
It's hilarious. It is hilarious, but it's so tiny for you. I can't believe. I can't cope with how small it is. It's so tiny. You have to watch that scene. Go if you've just in YouTube. The party. Peter Sellers. Lou roll. If you put that in, in a, at the end of the show. Uh, I've got to get back to how the hell do I get back to the show now? There we go. Sorry about that. I need to. I need to sort of fiddle it out because it's too small to show you. Um, so as Seely as Seely can't get through. I can't believe that you can't get through. That's um, that's just madness. Uh, so anyway, anybody else can give us a, a call. Uh, it'll be on BitChute if it's not. Uh, yes, I'm sure it is. I'm on BitChute, actually. Um, the uh, Bald Explorer is on BitChute. Uh, if you look up on BitChute, the Bald Explorer, we should be there. I, I don't think anybody watches them there, but I they ought to be... Hang on, I've got to check now. BitChute. BitChute.com. Uh, I'd be surprised if anyone... How do you search? Let's have a look. Uh... Vobes. If I put in Vobes, what happens? The Sunday catch-up. Two results. Is that all? Bald Explorer. Wait a minute. The last one went up on June the 9th. I'm not quite sure why that is. And I'm just sorry about this. You can't see this. Um, 16 views, 62 views. Oh, 56 views. People are watching the H.M. Morton's I Saw Two Englands. Hmm. On BitChute. There we are. I am on BitChute. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Ah, oh, but you didn't even think that I knew what BitChute was, did you? No idea. No idea. Uh, for... Only on video, Jeff. Uh, Glastonbury, Peter Sellers was a hero. Absolutely no ring. I hate seeing all the adverts promoting gambling and online bingo. Yeah. Who actually... Uh, is anybody out here going to own up to be somebody who does online gambling and anything like that? Do you know, I never do any gambling whatsoever. Not so, not a thing. Not even on the um, the Grand National. Are you? Where are you phoning from? Phoning from my bedroom. I'm plagued by Halford adverts, says Turbo Street. Have a word with Glastonbury Gabriel. He could do something about that. I'm plagued by working for them. Oh, yes, there we go. I had to laugh when I saw the billboards promoting John Cleese at the casinos in Oklahoma, says Jeff Kellison. I bet he came home from Southampton and kissed the immigrants when they got off the boat. I bet he did. Sean's allotment says 66 subscribers. Yeah, I thought you had more subscribers than that. Oh, you mean on on BitChute? Oh, yeah, 66 subscribers. Amazing, isn't it? I, I mean, it... I used to have a thing where it would just automatically upload. If you're enjoying the thing, by the way, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can give me a th I don't mind, really. Thumbs down or a th it's just doing nothing. Thumbs down, YouTube, even they kind of dismiss it. They don't care. They don't care if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's engagement. It's the fact that you've bothered to put something. There's somebody, I'm sure it's the same person, who just puts a thumbs down on everything I do. But he watches everything I do and makes a purposeful thing of it. It's great. I love it because but they, I, clearly they don't realise. They think they're doing me a disservice. But actually it's doing me a great service. Because if he did nothing and didn't watch them, that would be doing me a disservice. By not, by not commenting, not putting a thumbs up or down or not watching... That would be the way to, um, to to do me a disservice. But actually, by even just putting a thumbs down, it actually helps. It's uh, a lot of people don't realise that. Um, I've earned. I've never earned a bit shoot. Never heard a bit shoot. It's. Um, it, I mean, it's not an ideal platform because it's only in seven twenty. Uh, but it is a. It's a sort of if if one gets pulled from YouTube for saying something you know you shouldn't have said these days in the in the internet police where if you're not if you're not if you don't have group think and you don't follow the, the thoughts that everybody else has you can get pulled off just by you know blinking in the wrong way um, and so if you you know if you haven't taken the knee or anything like that you get can get pulled straight off straight off like that. <laughs> Um, and so, therefore, you, it's always good to have a, a little resource to go back to. But I will have to go and look at BitChute, see why they're still not uploading each one. I love the Panthacillas. Uh, Does your dog bite? Very funny. Says, yeah, absolutely. It's not my dog. Uh, only do the National Lottery, says Sean. I, I, do you know, I did that once. I did the National Lottery once. I won £10. 
Never did it again. I was I kept on the up. Never do it now. So I was nine. I made nine pounds out of that. I'm not going to do it again because you know that these things are geared. Uh, I think there was a fact, wasn't it, that um, these online gamblers, 99.1% or is it 90, 94 or something, 94% of gambles lose. That's what it is. Why would you do it? It's, I mean, it's, re it's not rigged at all. It's not, if it was 50-50, you could understand. 50-50 would be fine. 60-40 would be fine. 70-30 would be, you know, well, you you might be lucky. You might be lucky. If you're lucky and uh, you might have a good day, That's that would still give you favourable odds, I think. 70-30, you still could... It might be that one day you put a tenner in and you get a thousand out. Might pay for all the other stuff. But 90 something, why would you bother? Why? What? What is. I mean, it's an addiction. I realise that. It's an addiction. Uh, try plus four. Everyone's telling Sealy Chase. I'd give up Sealy Chase because if plus four, four, seven, nine, three, four, seven doesn't do it, then I, I don't know what's going to go. Um, but the lovely Judas says, We're really hoping to hear from you. There's nothing I can do. You need to use the exit code when dialing out of the country, says TurboStream. So whatever your exit code to get out of America, have you ever dialed out? Is it your phone? Is it somebody else's phone? Please don't ring on somebody else's phone. They get very upset. Sealy Call feels like a dream where you're fighting to get somewhere, but you never arrive. It's that running through treacle when you can't lift up your hands. I know exactly how it feels. Dear, oh dear. Well, look, we're running out of time. We've had such an exciting show and one call... One call and we've had a good old um, Barney over it, which was great. Uh, we care, Richard. You Here we go. Here's a phone call. Let's see if this is Seely Chase. Uh, oh, my hello, God. Caller. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe I got you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I've been trying so hard and so long to get a hold of you. It, well, it's... My mom just... Yes. No, no, no. I've, why is it... I've lost my voice now. Where have I gone? <laughs> Hello. What? Can you hear yes, me? All I'm right. Listening. Yes, I can. Oh, I no. had to turn. I had to turn you down on my phone, though. Hold on. Let me turn it down. Oops. Yeah, I, I, I just got a hold of my mom to help me dial the number correctly. Evidently, it's a zero one one four four. Then drop the zero on your number. Yes. And then, uh, then get through, and then dial out like the seven nine three four seven four six seven nine three. Oh my God! I thought I was gonna go nuts trying to get through. I'm so glad, huzzah! Yes, exactly, huzzah! Well, you're through now <laughs> to the UK. It's so lovely to hear you. So, Seely Chase, where, where, yes. what part of America are you in? I'm in Cal. I'm in the Southwest, California. Ah, down there in California. Yes. I haven't been to yes. that part. I've been to the uh, the central bit from Chicago down to San Antonio, Tesco's. Tesco's? What are San Antonio, Te Texas. And I've been on uh -huh. the east coast up where the Blue Ridge Mountains are, but never been on the other coast where you are in California. Oh, so you've never been to California. You must come. Where you had yes. Arnie. Didn't you have Arnie as your head chief for a while? Schwarzenegger, yes, he was. Yes, he was a gov. He was a gov for a while. <laughs> was he good? Yes. Oh well, I, you know, politics is politics. <laughs> but I, I mean, I suppose it's a bit. Job. I mean, I suppose it's not unusual, is it? It's not unusual for you Americans to have um, people from stage and screen, you know, with Reagan as a, a president, and now Trump from. D didn't he do what Alan Sugar does over here? The um, what, the Apprentice he had or something. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yes, he did have that show. He yeah, did. so... Uh, yeah, on NBC. On NBC, there you go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. never mind all that nonsense. It's lovely to, to uh, actually get you through. How long have you been... You've been watching the show for a while, haven't you? I, I have. I haven't been lately. I've been terribly busy lately, but I do love the show, and I, I personally think you should be knighted by the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I think it's such a service what you do, you know, and, and educating the ignorant, especially about England. You know, really, I... I'm I'm from England. I was born over there. Were you? I was you? born in Watford. Yeah, I was born in Watford. Yeah. Oh well. My fam my family is from the Fens, and my mother my mother's actually from Northern Ireland. So, yes. You're f you're f <laughs> so your family is from the Fens. What in the, the yeah, in, my, in yeah. East Anglia? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. how lovely. Yeah, yeah. But you were born yeah, in Watford. Are, I yeah. could understand why you wanted to get away to sunny California. 
Well, my parents moved here when I was little, you see, so... Yeah. Uh, so you don't really remember much of the UK? Uh, no, I mean, I've been to visit, yeah. and then I've lived abroad as well. I lived in Jamaica for like four years, too, so I'm not like totally ignorant about the world. I have traveled a little bit, but yeah, I have been I have been here in California for a while, though. Uh, so, yeah. so what do you do, Seely Chase? Uh, right now, I'm about to uh, color my hair and clean the kitchen. I'm <laughs> It's daytime over here, so I've got my chores to do for Friday, and then... Uh, that's what I do. I, t I take care of my parents and uh, keep myself uh, out of trouble and read books. And uh, what uh, what like what that. sort of books do you read? <laughs> um, I well, I, I read the Bible, but I like to uh, read. Um, I'm uh, reading um, the um, Bruce Springsteen's book right now. Um, I have that. I've been reading that. It's Born to Run. That's an excellent book. And I've also got. Um, uh, Miss Oz, her her name is uh, it's called Us. The book is called Us. It's about um, relationships and stuff like that. Very very good book. Wherever I put it, I think it might be in the. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Lisa Oz is the lady's name that wrote that book. She's tremendous. I recommend it highly. It's a very good book. Uh, oh right, that um, sounds yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's just the sort of things that's on my reading <laughs> list. As I cut, cut, glance <laughs> up at my various bookshelves and especially in the other room. That uh, would be probably the yeah. Bruce Springsteen's book is a trip. Born wow, to man. run. What's is that about running? Yes. As in, as in marathon running, or born to run? No, a... no, it's it's it's. Well, you know, he has that. He has a song. I think it's called Born to Run or something like that. And then 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 there's the uh, well, it's just a great book. I mean, just Bruce Springsteen, you know, <laughs> the boss. <laughs> Well, I, I, I really you, find it very interesting. I, yeah, I am afraid to say now you should really be talking to the lovely Julia because she is the the musical queen. She knows, you know, if you yeah, hum, if I yeah. say a, if I say a, a a line, any line about anything, she'll mm -hmm. she'll come back with the uh, song that it was. Tell She's, you what about it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I I'm not good <laughs> at educate you about it. <laughs> well, I need educating on uh, on all of that because um, a lot of these famous singers. I, it, I don't know why well, misspent youth doing making videos or super eight films and things. I wasn't into mm -hmm. music at all. So I missed all that. And when people say, oh, you know, do you know? So -and, -so -so? and I go, no, I don't know who that is. What? You don't know who it is. And it's like, mm -hmm. I have not a clue. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, but, so that sounds like a, a, a great book. Uh, to read and the other one about relationships well that's people yes. love all that kind of um, stuff and I, and I also I, I love reading the dictionary and I putz around in the garden and I have a garden project and I'm growing pumpkins and I'm growing some cannabis and um, pump but mostly my pumpkins and I'm, I'm sorry you just to keep sorry just sorry you got that in very quickly you, you're growing what Pumpkins yeah. and cannabis. And, and cannabis. Growing those two things. Yes, cannabis. It's very legal over here. It's legal. Very legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do <Yeah>. you get it? <laughs> very legal. Yeah. It's not just legal. <laughs> it's very legal. Yeah, it's very legal. <laughs> it's over very, very legal over here, yes. Is it? So, and do you, what do you do with... little projects. Right, yeah, no surprise. Yeah. Uh, do you ship it out all over the world? No, actually, I have um, I have it coming out of my ears. To be honest with you, oh do you? Um, I, yeah, I. What do you do? Really sell sell like your earwax? Sell do you sell it. sell the earwax? See, that's the thing. I've got I've got it coming out my ears, and truthfully, I mean, I'm the only one I know that smokes weed. You know, so I just. I have more than enough. I would like to get. I would like to be able to sell it to a dispensary or something because it's all organic. I yes. Don't treat it with chemicals or anything like that. But it's all, um, like how do you say, vegetarian or um. Especially if you've very got, good if you've got nu nutrients, very good nutrients, very yes. organic nutrients. They don't put um, chemicals on it. No, good for yeah. you. Um, yeah. And I guess if you had a party and you've got it coming out, you've got loads of it, you could just have a bonfire's worth, couldn't you? And you'll just go I around could. the bonfire. I could. <laughs> I literally could. Yeah. I uh, could. And nobody. Yeah. And so I. So are you allowed to smoke um, this cannabis legally? Oh yes. Yeah. I yes. mean, are you allowed to drive and smoke and smoke it? They don't. No, no, no. You're not supposed to do that. No, and, but uh, I bet do people that. do, though, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, do people get up late round where you live? 
lately, I would think so, because everything's changed. And I was tripping on the fact that you guys don't have to wear masks over there. And I was freaking out because everywhere over here you have to wear masks and if you you don't get admittance if you're not wearing one so you're not wearing masks over there seriously well um some people are wearing masks but uh, they're only the scaredy cats and the ones that uh, are so fearful that the government is absolutely frightened into a state of rigid parallel paralysis but uh, the more right, right. The, 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 the more liberated members of society who have uh, done a bit more research on this uh, situation and who are reasonably healthy um, are, mm -hmm. are not. Uh, but we've all got to wear them when we go into supermarkets and things like that as of next week until the foreseeable future. Wow. I'm surprised that you haven't had to do it at all yet. Because they've been wearing, they've been having this go. They're taking it so seriously over here. Like, I mean, it's like so hot outside right now. It gets up into the hundreds. I mean, like 110, 115. You and go you've got to wear a like, mask. You can, yeah, and you have to wear a mask. And and well, not outside. I mean, you could like not wear it. But I'm just saying, if you're going inside or going to a store somewhere, you have to wear it. So, and that's so you don't was, have to wear I, it. You yeah. don't. You don't have to wear it outside. Well, you I, you don't you could you you know they recommend that you do, but me and yet, personally, and yet the I, heat, the sunlight. I mean, at those sort of temperatures, yeah, exactly. the, any spittle it's that comes out of somebody is going to it, um, evaporate. It is bleh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's ridiculous. It's just totally it's so hot. The whole world seems. It seems to me the whole world is just being trained to do as we are told. No independent thinkers. No um, people who can you, you know. D d We've all got to just sort of toe the line all of a sudden. It seems like it seems like they're trying to prepare everybody for something else, doesn't it? Mm, it does. I don't know quite what. Uh, maybe they're trying to prepare them all for the Vogue show at some point. Yeah. But, um, the sign of the times, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sign of the times, literally. It's, it's, it, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. So uh, um, there was another question that went buzzing through my head. Um, it's... A, what else? What other nefarious things go on in California that would be illegal elsewhere? Nefarious and illegal. Well, Everything you know, in the in the way, because it go, that goes on here, it goes on there. Mm, I the mean, you, with the cannabis, yeah. the cannabis, not canapes, the can, can, um, cannabis. Yes, cannabis. I wonder if you can get cannabis canapes. They would be quite nice at parties. <laughs> I used to do. They um, have. They you, you can make everything. They make everything. They have all kinds of edibles. They have every kind of uh, candy. They have every kind of butter. You could like. You could go to a store and there's like candies, edibles, and they have it um, different ways you can consume it. All, and they have uh, also like they call them dabs. People do them like that, and they make dabs. all kinds of things from it. Yeah, we used to have dib dabs, dabs when we were at school uh, when I was a kid, but I don't think it's the same thing. Sure, but in us, but are people um, are people somewhat you know uh, stoned all day long? Is every is it like a zombie town now? Um, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else. Well, I mean, you know, if you look out your window, do people just walking around going, "Yeah, hi, man. Yeah, it's really cool. My, yeah, it's really I'll lovely." Be well, not because not everybody smokes weed. You know, oh. not everybody smokes weed. No. Yeah, but a lot of people do. So, and a lot of people are high twenty four seven. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, that can't yeah. be good for them, can it? Well, <laughs> lung cancer. You know, I suppose. Something to think I suppose about. it helps you get through this COVID, especially in lockdown. I mean, if you've got nothing to do with your life and you've got, you know, you can't go to work, you can't go out, and you've got to wear a mask. You may as well just smoke there and let the world pass you by. Well, if you put it like that. <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, there's a lot of people who perhaps will try and entertain themselves uh, by by forgetting out their troubles. I mean, I, you know, alcoholics mm -hmm. will probably have had a field day over the last uh, 14, 15 weeks drinking as mm -hmm. much as they can to sort of go wake me up when it's over. And I'm sure that people mm -hmm. who, you know, smoke dope can just switch into an altered, uh, pers an altered state of awareness. Well, you know, I, I try and have a good day no matter what. Sometimes I have good days, sometimes I have bad days, you know. It just depends. And I, I always try and put the Lord first in my life. 
So I, you know, I, I put, I, I always try and put God first in my life does, before I put does, anything else, before what, the cannabis, before my, my relationship with my parents, before anything. What does, I try to do that as best I can. And, and what is God's position on the <laughs> cannabis? Um, what is God's position on the cannabis? Mm. Well, he put it here for a reason, you know, as with anything, you know, I, I would, you know, how do you say like abusing something and consuming something? Well, I, I, su- I suppose, I, well, I don't know. I mean, the th- I suppose over it here, on if, you know, it's like if you're a glutton about it, I'm sure it's <laughs> yeah. not going to be good about anything. No, I suppose because yeah. I'm looking at it from over here in in very uptight British you're... society, it's illegal, you see. I mean, people smoke it right. and, and you're not supposed right. to. Uh, and some people get away with it and some people get caught and, you know, some people have friends in high places and, and others have mm-hmm. friends in the gutter and what have you. But uh, it is mm-hmm. technically, it is, it's illegal. So um, it's yeah, not legal in every... Is it, is it legal in every state in America? No, I don't no. think it is. But no. it should be. I think they, they would like to make it, you know, for every state. Yeah. And I, I think it should be. I think, you know, I personally think drugs should be um, uh, decriminalized there's too many people going to jail for it, and there's a lot of bad, nefarious activities that come from it. Well, all drugs. That's why they should make it. Yeah. Well, I mean, heroin you know? and things like that. Everything, you know. Let them have it. Let them have it. And the pe- Yeah, let them have it. And the people that will do it are the people that, and the people that won't do it, you know. There's a great you know film. Saying? There's a great film called Let, let Him Have It. Um, let with Him the, Have It. Yeah, with the bloke <laughs> who was um, mm-hmm. the... First of the new set of Doctor Who's, I can't remember his name now. He was in it for one season, mm-hmm. then he left. And uh, it was the case of a 1950s, slightly backward kid who held a gun at a policeman uh, on the roof of a building. And he's holding this gun, looking at the policeman, and his mate says, and the policeman says, give me the gun, give me the gun. And mm-hmm. his mate says to this slightly backward kid, let him have it. Oh, good God. <laughs> so he fired and killed the policeman. Oh. And it, he didn't mean that. He didn't mean let him have the bullet. He meant let him have the gun. Let him have the gun. Right? And as a consequence, yeah. Bentley, that's right, Bentley his name was, and as a consequence he was hanged. But uh, let him have it. Let them have the heroin. There we are, Seely Chase, the words you heard tonight, ladies and gentlemen. How amazing. Um... <laughs> I, I don't think there should be any restrictions on anything on, like that because people, if you if you know that it was, it's always been in history. There's always been there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but That's not every. But what there. about the weak, the people who don't understand, the people who need guidance, the people who can't comprehend the 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 uh, the spiraling down to bad health and also potential um, bad deeds for other people that might happen as a result of taking. These There's things. always going to be wicked people and evil people. You just have to realize that. And, you know, if you let something control you, then that's going to be your problem. Before you, you go... never let anything control, control, before control before you. you before ever. you go, Seely uh, Chase, could you do me one favour? What would that be? Could you write to Her Majesty the Queen and say, I think that Richard Vogue should be knighted... Because you said that at the beginning. I do. I be- absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. I believe. <laughs> because I know I, I'm serious because of what you do, the good you do to educate people about England, about uh, the areas you go and visit and the show. I think it's just tremendous what you do. Well, you absolutely m- wonderful. Thank you very much for becoming my number one fan. Am I? <laughs> well, I don't know whether I don't know whether that's the result of uh, the stuff that you smoke. Of course, it may well be that uh, you'll wake up and go, well, "Who the hell was I talking to? What have I said to him? Oh my God, I made." No, a good... no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I <laughs> am joking. There's something to be said about that too. You get kind of immune after a while if you you know smoke smoke the same weed all the time. It kind of doesn't even get you high anymore. Oh right. So. Oh, yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. Well, it's been yeah. lovely talking to you. We've got to go and play um, a bit of Andrew Murphy before we go. But uh, thank love you. Love the show, Robes. Fa- Absolutely love it. Fantastic. And thank you so much for persevering and getting through. Everybody, I think everybody's appreciated that. Uh, yes, thank you so much. And I love, love, you so entertaining. Thanks. And I'm I will pleased. be listening. Top thank banana. So Take care.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There we are, Seely Chase. There. Um, <laughs> interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Seely, for uh, for persevering and getting through. Wasn't that interesting? It's. Uh, I mean, it's. I suppose because I don't smoke. I don't do anything naughty. And the naughtiest thing I do is come on here and waffle at you. A load of old nonsense. And that's about as far as it goes, really. I'm too much of a goody-goody. I mean, I don't go to a youth hostel association. I would hate to trespass on somebody's land knowingly and spend the night there. I would be ashamed. I've, it's just the way I've been brought up. Uh, but there we are, across the other side of uh, the pond. Seely Chase, um, uh, you know, putting the Lord first and uh, the... The Wicked Weed second and the Vobes third. Although, of course, she, she momentarily put me first because she wants the Queen to slice my shoulders off with that broad sword that she waves. Um, thank you so much for the comments. I'm going to read some of those in a moment because I have seen our moment of Murphy, but you haven't. So let's go over. Hello, Vobes. No, wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, uh, stop. Hello, Vobes. Yes, no, stop. Got too excited, ladies and gentlemen. Too excited. Pressed all the wrong buttons in the wrong order. You haven't seen the moment of Murphy is what I was trying to say, but you will now. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Moment of Murphy with me, Andrew Murphy. Today is Friday the 10th of July, 2020. And I thought I'd come over to Kingley Vale in West Sussex and I thought I'd have a little walk up through the trees to the top of the hill to look at the view. Right everyone, I have now arrived at the bottom of Kingley Vale. Behind me, through where my thumb's pointing, is the trees which will lead up to the viewpoint. Now I wandered up a bit farther towards the viewpoint and now I'm just about to head inside the ancient woodland. I've just come out of the ancient woodland behind me. I'm just about to head up there, going right round to the top of there. I've even found this dew pond that this lovely border collie is having a drink out of. I'm now on top of Kingly Vale, on one of the uh, kind of burial mounds up here. I'm now going to show you a 360 panoramic view of what I can see. Let's go. I'm going to head back to the car that way. 
I would just like to thank you for your company and until next time, bye for now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Andy. It's so nice to uh, see Kingly Vale again after all this time. In fact, that was the second video that the lovely Julia and I did back in 2018, it must have been. Um, February, I think. February, February 2018, something like that. Uh, seems so long ago. Uh, but there you are. Uh, and so much has gone on underneath the table, I nearly said. <laughs> Uh, which isn't what I meant, but uh, the water under the bridge. There we are, that's more like it. Uh, anyway, so there, I've just been reading the comments at the same time. Thank you very much. John Berger trying to teach the Vobes irony. Uh, they still don't understand it, do the poor old Americans? Um, and I guess the dew pond is smaller, says Mike Stevens. Thanks, Andrew, that was great. The tree looks like it reached out and grabbed you. They're fantastic trees over there. Absolutely wonderful. Um... So there we go. Lots of lots of good stuff. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been all good fun. Thanks to Seely Chase and to Nigel Sandler for calling in, to the lovely Julia and Judith for doing all the admin and monitoring work, and for you guys with all your different opinions. It's it's superb. It's all a bit of fun. Don't take it to heart. Don't get hot under the collar. We can all disagree. Maybe some of the stuff I've said I don't necessarily mean. It's all entertainment, folks, all part of the persona. The main thing is that we all just gather together and we have a little smoke now i don't know the difference between cannabis and marijuana uh, robert croser was telling me it was somebody was telling me it was put marijuana is in 11 states but cannabis is only in california i don't know what the difference is and i just uh, i've never taken any drugs that i i vividly remember being at Aronside Primary School in Mr Pearson's class, having a show, having a projected show, a slideshow, of what happens to your lungs when you smoke. And I was uh, about 10 years old, 9, 10, 9 years old, 10 years old, and they showed us a picture of what happens when you smoke to the lungs. And that image stayed with me, and I just could not comprehend why anybody, anybody, would want to put a cigarette to their mouth and inhale. And when I was a kid, my mate Peter Richardson and I, we uh, did experiment with uh, smoking like most people do, but we got it. We couldn't afford to go and buy anything. So we got some newspaper and some grass cuttings that had dried out a bit. And we rolled these, put these grass cuttings, ordinary, you know, from the lawn, rolled them up into a massive great cigar, puffed a bit of that and went, God, never again. And that was that, put me off for life. But I always remembered, um, I, I did. T I enjoyed smoking a pipe when I was doing some stage work. Um, I did enjoy doing a bit of pipe smoking on stage and things like that. But I'd never took it in. This idea that you would inhale, that you would inhale it and have damage to your lungs. I just can't, I, don't, I can't comprehend it. I just don't, you know, I, and that's it. Uh, can we have Peter Richardson on the Vogue show? I'll have to ask him. I We're going to meet up. We had a chat and um, we're going to meet up. Uh, he said after the COVID thing. So I don't know if Peter's also equally scared by the COVID thing. Um, I mean, he's a healthy individual. Um, I don't think he's uh, got any problems whatsoever. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. It was all a bit of fun, wasn't it? It's all just a bit of a laugh. Would grass give you nutrients to the smoke, says Connor's Dark Corner? Well, it depends what was in the soil. If the soil's got minerals and nutrients in it, the chances are. I mean, what you need is a species-rich herbage. That's what you need. And on that note, um, I will say good night. Thank you so much for watching. It has been fun, uh, but I now have to disappear, disembark. I'll see if I can get back. We'll get rid of that, get rid of that. And say cheerio, ta-ta for now. And until Monday, goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. <laughs>